algorithm understood the assignment. There's only been one time that the YouTube algorithm understood the assignment, and that's when they started feeding Maria Takeuchi's plastic love to everybody on the platform. That was the only time they've ever gotten it right. The rest of the time, they're trying to radicalize. I'm trying to... My mom watches a lot of, like, nutrition videos on, on YouTube. And I try to I explain to her, and, and she gets it. But I try to explain to her that the YouTube algorithm is always trying to radicalize you. Sorry, I'm just fixing my camera here. <clears throat> just fixing my camera a little bit. Now I'm almost such a small boy now. That's okay. It's not always trying to radicalize you in a political direction. Sometimes it's trying to radic it, it tries to radicalize you to become uh, very enthusiastic about whatever the first thing you searched on the platform actually is. So if you searched like good vegetarian recipes, they're going to start to serve you videos. The first one's going to be like mm, lentil chili. And then the second one's going to be like, tastes just like scrambled eggs but doesn't use eggs. And then the third one is going to be like, why you're a monster if you eat wheat. And then like six months later, you're out here, uh, you know, people are making tweets that are like, I'm eating a sandwich and you're replying to them. You've got like 700 emojis in your Twitter name. That's like, I can't believe you would uh, mill the seeds to make the bread. Did you know if you planted those seeds, you could get an increasingly a yield of wheat that would blah, 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 blah. Anyway. I think I got a, I, I think I did all that camera work and just put myself right in the same spot. After my computer blue screen yesterday, it it's my my camera it just doesn't feel right. When you got a, a head like this, it's it's very difficult to get it perfectly in the frame. I've been through the exact rabbit hole. Dude, it's this it and the thing is as we get started here, I guess we'll run the casino. That's a good point. Start prediction. Um, will NL win this one? Will NL win this one? Yes, no, two minutes. Um, it's the same for everything. <clears throat> like, I, I mean, I don't watch politics videos on YouTube. I watch them on Facebook, you know? When in Rome. However, when I watch, well, when I used to watch, like, investing content, you'll Google, or YouTube, like, you know, Jack Bogle quotes. And then the first video will be like 10 times Jack Bogle understood the assignment. And then like six recommendations later, they got you thinking like, oh, maybe I should take out like 10x leverage on uh, Kathy Wood's Arc K fund. Like I, I went here with the best of intentions to find something to like make my life. Like YouTube always tries to push you deeper into whatever rabbit hole. They try to make you an obsessive for whatever it is you were curious about in the first place. Come on. Come on. Don't offend me. Now, I understand why that's good for YouTube. I don't think uh, it's necessary. I mean, I think it could be good for you as a person as long as you use it appropriately. But you got to know, you know, that you're the you're the product. <clears throat> now I'm obsessed with bald YouTubers. Hey, Chad, he ignores my messages. Please, for the love of God, beg him to play normal mode instead of hard mode. I think I found out why I'm ignoring your messages. <laughs> but why? This is what I mean! You probably watched too many Isaac episodes and now YouTube's feeding you videos like the optimal way to play The Binding of Isaac and now you're in chat going, uh, please, he doesn't even know he hasn't watched the video essay on normal mode yet. Like, you... you that's why you gotta pull it back a little bit. You've watched too many of my episodes, and now you've uh, you've you've radicalized yourself in the Binding of Isaac community. Hank, Hank, he doesn't know normal mode drops enough keys to actually allow you to go to item rooms. Hank, I mean, there's things that you know. You you could be radicalized in like a good way, probably. I don't know. Or maybe not, I don't know, maybe like the only good, uh, like th there's only less bad forms of radicalization. Because it seems like the best case scenario if you become obsessed with something by watching too many YouTube videos is that you just, maybe you don't become, you know, like, uh, a terrorist, but you would just become annoying to other people, maybe, who are just trying to live their lives. 
I suppose that's the uh, that's the best case scenario. I support this. I support that decision. Dude, you can become radicalized to everything. It's crazy. Like, even you ever go to, like, r slash Pokemon Go is a great example. r slash Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go is a game where you take walks and, um, you know, touch your phone every, like, three minutes. r slash Pokemon Go is news about the game. r slash The Silk Road is people who uh, exclusively think that it's the worst game ever made, but they're, like, a captive audience. They absolutely have to play it. The game was always better three years ago, even though three years ago when I started playing it, people were like, this is the, the worst state that the game has ever been in. Oh, by the way, Niantic is remaining so... Like, the, the, the posts on r slash the, the Silk Road are actually like, Niantic knows how bad the, the Alola event is. Look at, they photoshopped a Dragonite onto the phone in the advertisement that they tweeted yesterday. And uh, you gotta... I hate to say it. You gotta, and, and it's crazy, because this is the, the game where you touch grass. You gotta touch some damn grass. Hangman, strength, handman, what a waste of everybody's time. Can you believe this? Or, I don't know, maybe you gotta stop touching grass. I'm sure it happens on every subreddit, man. I'm sure if you go to, like, r slash sewing, there will be people there on r slash sewing who are, like, just there to learn how to sew, and then six months later, they're like, can you believe Singer's new uh, sewing machine? Can you believe the bullshit that Singer is trying to sell us on? It doesn't even have a reticulating spleen. The only true sewing machine is a wrought iron sewing machine from the 1930s, back when they actually cared about quality. Hey, Glutes the Toot, what a name. Thanks for the gifted subscription. Thank you. Thank you. Good secret room. Plus two base take. I'm ignoring the, the minus twos. There's not that many. Only, you know, like a plurality. Burp, 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 burp. Isaac. You're not using a loom, you amateur. Oh, I remember when I still used this sewing machine. <laughs> then I became so fast at, at using a hand loom. Uh, oh, you don't have a loomery in your house? Hmm, how quaint. A sewing machine. A sewing room. Let me guess, you buy your own fabrics. <laughs> I create them myself out of uh, chiffon that I grow on our family estate. User was gilded for this post. Thanks for the gold, kind stranger. Luma. What the hell is this? I don't remember what any of these items do. Well, fine. Oh, oh, you don't tell me this is a three tier item and cut off my head and tell me it's raining. While firing, charge up a short ranged brimstone that shoots behind you. How about no, Scott? It's a funny item. Don't debase yourself. Cut off my head and tell me it's raining. What is that? You know, like, don't crap down my neck and tell me it's raining or whatever. Don't, uh... Don't uh, piss on my face and tell me it's uh, hailing, you know? You know what I'm talking about? You don't. Uh, maybe you don't know metaphors that well. Okay, now we're freaking talking, man. Look, here's the thing. Blanket is obviously good, but Dreamcatcher is obviously hilarious. So let's buy an item that I doubt I will ever use. I'm still buzzing from yesterday, man. Where, like... I gotta say it, 10 times NL put his ninth grade gym teacher on notice. I mean, ninth grade English teacher. I still can't believe the story my mom told me from the parent-teacher conference where she was like, if you handed in your assignments in better quality, you would get better marks. That's so messed up to me, man. In a world where we're supposed to 
care about the contents of someone's character instead of how they look on the outside, she do be teaching me the opposite at a very formative age. Luckily for her, I'm a free thinker, so it didn't really have that much of an impact on me, but still. I do, I, there's one time, I actually have no problems with my ninth grade gym teacher, except for the fact that uh, on my first day of uh, ninth grade, which is your first day of high school, my bus was late, so I got to school late, and when I walked into the class 15 minutes late, he was like, don't let it happen again. And I'm like, okay. I'm 13 years old. I don't really have a lot of control over that. It mostly depends on the bus and like the traffic and stuff like that. But I'll, do, I'll, I'll let the bus driver know, I guess. Anyway, that's it. Still with this vendetta? It's not a vendetta. It's just 10 times my gym teacher didn't understand the assignment. 10 times high school NL morbed his... Sorry, I'm trying to make this uh, content more keyword rich. I, uh, I thought of uh, a good joke that took too much effort to tweet last night. You know the one that's always it's like memes if Jeb wins, memes if Jeb loses, and it's the two folders stuffed with images? YouTube thumbnails... Uh, if the news is good tomorrow. YouTube thumbnails if the news is bad tomorrow. Morbius Euphoria has gripped the stock market. As the stock market morbed 1.4% higher on positive sentiment and meme euphoria. Morbius Madness has cratered the stock market. The indexes are down 75 basis points. Is it the Morbius effect? Okay, hold on. We This is good enough. He's trying too hard? What are you- I'm literally just telling you what you're gonna see on YouTube tomorrow. I'm giving you access to my crystal ball. Let's go! When's the good joke? You know where the good joke won't be? Um, on Netflix. <laughs> I don't look at this. I don't even look at it. Don't e avert your gaze. I did watch the, the Norm Macdonald Zoom special last night, though, and I, I thought it had its moments. You skipped the transition? That is true. That is something that I did. That is, and, and therein lies the humor, I suppose. Ooh, now we're talking. Okay, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. That's bookworm. I would rather re-roll and try to get a step further on this one. I did not see the inside outtakes, but I, I would like to, but like, honestly, and I, I know how this sounds as a 33 year old man, inside kind of like, it fucked me up a little bit. It's the kind of thing like you got to be in the right mindset to sort of like watch. I, I get that the, I've been, I, I've been told that the, uh, the inside 1.5 is more funny than, you know, melancholy. But I gotta find myself in the right sort of mindset to get into it, I think. I did see the, you know, They're really gonna make me vote for Joe Biden. I saw that. And I was like, hmm, Keck W? Mm, how droll, very humorous. Help. By the way, I, I saw Justin's tweet today. How he said he's held his nose and voted in five presidential elections and he still gets cyber bullied online because people say he's the reason that Omega Trump's gonna get elected. You gotta leave Justin alone. First off, I, you got Justin so fucked up he's tweeting that shit in Memorial Week. In memor the most sacred of all weeks and yet you've still got impressed, okay? Secondly, you gotta be, you gotta give him some slack. He even moved to a damn swing state. He's a, he's... The knight's in Biden's service right now. He's he's doing his part. He's a damn hero. Help help me help me. I can dodge. I can dodge with the best of them. He he lives. I think he lives in a swing state. This you know what's fucked up? The swing. Sorry to the, all the people who were watching this with their kids and thought I didn't swear during Isaac. That was just only the ones with the Drac thumbnails are family friendly. 
It's like when you see a, a Kendall ride on a Peloton and she's got her hair in a ponytail, you know you're in trouble, okay? Anyway. What was I saying? Regardless, I, I'm loving the minus twos there. Dude, go ahead, put the minus twos out there. Relatable, minus two, minus two, it just makes me more powerful. I gotta go back to that library. Either way, they keep changing the damn swing states. When I was a kid, Florida's a swing state. Now it's a, a, a bastion of American freedom. Is it not a swing state anymore? Is Virginia a swing state? I think that's where, uh, that's where Justin lives. Sure is. Wait, Florida or Virginia? Florida isn't anymore, but Virginia is. Okay. <clears throat> Georgia's a swing state now. What a world. You know what's been living uh, rent-free in my head? That tweet that I retweeted on, like, Saturday. Actually, it was probably Friday night. Friday night, now that I think about it. That was um, the fake outcast song. Big boy voice. Toe up from the flow up. Swimming in gorgeous Florida women, but the pimpers out in Georgia. Tore up. Hope the insurance show up. The, those boys will have you sleeping as soon as they round the corner. And then Andre 3000. She trapped in my cadmium palace. It's just, it, for whatever, it just hits the perfect note. It's such a, it's such a good fake outcast bit that it's, I, like, I've been kind of bopping my head to it for almost a week now. She trapped in my cadmium palace. <laughs> Whoa, okay, hold I need some damage here. You notice that? Isaac in 2022 be like, mm, where's my damage upgrade, Biden? I haven't forgotten about the Ace of Diamonds. I just want to, like, I don't know. I want to find a second secret room with 15 red hearts in it so that I can get 8 cents out of it. Yeah, I skip the Devil's Gambit every time. Get over it. I skip it because I want to get the Angel's Gambit because Devil Deals aren't good anymore. B Biden's damage upgrade must be an election year. Okay, let's go. He's done it. I can't believe it. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I think we might want to invest in some rerolls here. The top 1% have 99% of the damage upgrades. Why should the people... It's not really a good Bernie impression. I lost my Bernie impression, man. How come you don't want me, man? Those of us who have received deals with the devil become more powerful and are more likely to receive deals with the devil in the future. Does this seem fair to you? It's gone. It's not there anymore. You're kind of becoming the no talent guy. Justin deleted his tweet just now. Ah, I hope it was. Justin, are you here? It wasn't because of me, right? I just, I was riffing on it. I didn't mean to pick this up. I was riffing on it and supporting you. He's live right now? Okay, never mind then. He, he, He's probably just, he did the smart thing. Deleting tweets is always good, and I'm tired of pretending it's not. Book of Belial's boosted? I don't even know what that means. What does that even mean? Book of Belial's boosted. Toe up from the flow up? Swimming in gorgeous Florida women, but the pimp reside in Georgia? Whoa! You know what? I don't I don't want your cube of meat. No more. Book boosted. It's juiced out of the gourd. It's zuzzy with the sauce. It's got everything the body needs. I don't, I'm not paying for that. Are you crazy? <laughs> you, must have, you must have lost your damn mind. I did also see, and again, I'm not really um, part of the podcast Dorati, um, but I saw that the person who made that Outcast tweet, their most recent photo was like, I picked a very unfortunate shirt to wear to the emergency room, and it was uh, a shirt that said, I tested positive for Swag 19. 
And it just... I don't know. They got a certain... They got a... They, they hit me right in the funny bone. I don't even know who they are, but it's a... It's a hilarious tweet. I can't deny that. Okay, our final room. We can do this. Left hand, pretty based in my opinion. Yo, it's Paul Dano, dude! I love your work! Except Cowboys and Aliens, but like, you know, that was earlier in your career. It's not your fault, really, that the movie was ass. I saw that... Oh, we didn't even get left hand. What the hell? I saw that, uh... I saw Cowboys and Aliens in... In theaters. Now, I want to be clear, I, and I've told this story before. I did not see it in theaters because I wanted to see it in theaters. I was relatively confident that it was going to be... In fact, even more than relatively confident. I was convinced that that movie was going to be pure ass. But um, one of my co-workers in Korea was like, Bro, we got to go see that movie. It's got cowboys and aliens in it. How could it go wrong? Um, and... Uh, I was just kind of, you know, starved for stuff to do when I lived in South Korea, so I just went. <laughs> and the whole time I was like, this looks, this is not good. And also, um, he got insanely excited, holy cow, for the Man of Steel trailer that came before uh, Cowboys and Aliens. He was like, and you gotta remember, th there were two things that, that he was excited about. He's a nice guy, by the way, so I'm, I'm not trying to make a joke at his expense. But there were two things I remember he was very excited for. One of them was um, Man of Steel. He was like, finally a serious take on the Superman mythos. And the other one was Bioshock Infinite. I remember watching like the 25 minute E3 2011 Bioshock Infinite reveal with him. And he was like, this shit's gonna like, it's gonna be by far the best game ever made. And then it came out and people were like, it is. And then like five minutes later, they were like, not. Nah. <laughs> oh, I haven't played it. I haven't played it. Many people are saying it. I've never played it. I'd like a battery, please. Do you... I just like... Not that battery. I want a smaller battery. Thank you. That E3 reveal was something else, though. It's free on Epic this week. Creator code uh, Northern Lion, please. Ooh. Battery, please. Uh, 48 hour energy. Alright, well, I guess we're not gonna get a free item, but we did get Book of Revel- or, uh, Book of, um, whatever it's called. Maggie's Bible. What is- <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? What is this book called? Book of Virtues, yeah, Book of Virtues is pretty sick. Nothing wrong with Book of Virtues. Cup of Ace, Cup of Goose, uh, Cup of Goose. Cup of goose with a hundred thousand dollars on my wrist, on my wrist. Take the liquor straight, never chase that. Top back like we bring an 88 back skirt. Cup of Gru. Dude, I haven't even seen like a, a sip of Gru. I've never seen those movies. But I have played the mobile game based on Despicable Me too. <clears throat> Groose, Skyward Sword, Groose Bolton, and there's many, many Grooses. Canada Groose, Spruce Groose, Blues Clues. You know Blues Clues is still on the air, by the way? They're on like their eighth Steve now. I skipped all the ones in the middle. I know original Steve, and then there's like a new Steve. He's got a new song. We just solved Blue's Clues. We just solved Blue's Clues. And he does like a Fortnite dance. It's kind of sick, honestly. I do have to say of, of the... Of the relatively still small amount of... 
uh, children's television programs that I've seen. Sesame Street is still goaded. But Blue's Clues is pretty good. Like, Blue's... I, I would let my child watch Blue's Clues, no questions asked. I would also let my child watch Peppa Pig, no questions asked. I don't want to sound like a Luddite, uh, necessarily, but... Every show I've seen on, um... Like, Treehouse, which is like our Nickelodeon, Disney Channel kind of conglomerate. Um... Any show I've seen that's 2D animation, I've been like, this is kind of cool. Any show I've seen that's a pseudo 3D animation, I'm like, you can't watch this without your mom's permission. Uh, Ranger Rob. Ranger Rob, it just, I worry that it's going to give uh, my daughter unrealistic expectations. It's a guy who lives in a treehouse in the forest. He has, like, an iPad for, for every single thing that he... Every single task in his life, he has an iPad. What about South Park? Well, I mean, I watch it every night, so... I mean, you're saying my daughter shouldn't be allowed to watch what I watch? It's my favorite show. I really relate to all the characters. And the nuanced portrayal of what life is like in, in a satirical town in the United States of America. Here's the thing. I just, I like that they're saying it, man. A lot of people would tell you you can't say it these days. Trey Parker and Matt Stone are like, mmm, says it. Okay, I'm going, man. Give me one of this. They're like, it. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Reroll me? I love it. Speed upgrade? Ace of Diamonds is a damn trap, man. Because now I'm like, I only want to use it on things that are not coins. But I want to use it when there's a lot of things on the room. But when there's a lot of things on the room, they're only coins. Yeah, I let my daughter watch The View. I want her to get a, uh, I mean, a nuanced view of modern issues. Such as the Will Smith Oscar slap. I think it's important that I, I present like a fair and balanced viewpoint. Is Survivor Elizabeth still on the view? Planetaria! Okay, whatever. She's not? Did she get replaced by Megan McCain? Remember Hoda? Of course I know Hoda Kata from the Today Show. She's famous. There's no way they replaced her with Boston Rob. Maybe they would replace her with Amber. They would not replace her with Boston Rob, though. I'm out of here. She's the new Steve on Blue's Clues? She's actually not. She's just a lady. I keep skipping the freaking... I never... Sh I do... Of all the shop items I could have bought on this run, I literally bought Dreamcatcher just because I knew I wouldn't use it. What's wrong with me? NL, do you like how it's made? It's got to be one of the best Canadian shows of all time. Although, the other... It, it does... Sometimes... It makes me not want to, like, especially eat things that I like. Like, the, I used to buy this bread, but mostly because it was at the grocery store that I that I used to go to. And it was called, like, La Parisienne or something like that, right? And it was, I knew it was an industrial bakery, but just because of the branding, and I guess I was a little more naive, like, a few years ago, I let myself think that, you know, oh, an industrial bakery? That's probably, like, um... An, a situation where, like, they just have, like, a lot of bread bakers that work on, like, you know, a, a line and they're all baking bread and stuff like that. You know what? Get out of here. Um, and then I watched an episode of How It's Made where they're like, here's how croissants are made for the Dempsters Corporation. It was literally just, like, 15 machines in sequence. And, uh, and then the dough extruder extrudes the dough. And then the dough folder folds the dough enough times to add that crispy... Uh, 
and airy texture that you love in croissants. And I was like, I'm not eating it. Like, not, no human being touched the croissant. No human hand touched the croissant. From dough extrusion to it, it actually being on the store shelf. I was like, I don't want this anymore. So what? Well, I don't know. I just feel like, you know, kind of shattered my illusion. I, I kind of thought there was a, like a mustachioed French man who was just... It, it wasn't that he was great at making croissants. He was just like really fast at it. So he got hired by the Bimbo Corporation. It's a real thing. Look it up. Yeah, plus, I, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but it turns out the machine isn't even French. That shit, like most machines, was made in Switzerland. Does this seem fair to you? That shit's Swiss? I know, right? You prefer your food manhandled? Well, like... I don't care if, like, my Doritos, you know, never have a human come in and, like, shape one-eighth of the bag or something like that. I'm not insane. But, like, for stuff like bread, a, a croissant, yeah, I want, I want the human touch, you know? Because I'm buying it because I, I believe in the, in the power of artisans. Also, they just, I don't know. I mean, if you've ever had a croissant out of like the clamshell packaging from the grocery store versus like a croissant from a, an actual bakery or coffee shop, like you're just eating the grocery store croissant because you want like bread. You're eating the, when the, the experience you get from eating like a bakery croissant, you're like, oh baby, now, now I'm pogging. This goes hard. 10 times bakeries understood the assignment. Cause like a, a croissant from the grocery store is just like, it's like all the air dissipates as soon as you bite in. When you bite into like an artisan croissant, like the, there's dough flaking off and it's crispy and you can see the crumb on the outside. Look, I think we gotta take the urn of souls. Getting a lot of people asking a lot of questions about Isaac that would be answered if you watched the previous 3,300 uh, episodes in the series. Getting a lot of questions about my Binding of Isaac series that are answered by my Binding of Isaac series. I tapped? I did not mean to tap. I'll never tap. Headstrong, I'll take on anyone. Some people just don't want to put in the work. That's the thing. People be like, um, give me the cliff notes on the Binding of Isaac. If you don't, if you only have time for the cliff notes, I don't have time for you. It's that simple. Would you ever go on Naked and Afraid? No, that show is only for, uh, insane people. I, the, isn't it like Naked and Afraid is crazy because like on Naked and Afraid we, we've actually I have to acknowledge this we've gotten a lot of damage on this run I really appreciate that that's not really good enough anymore that's definitely good enough Naked and Afraid like on Survivor you could win a million dollars or you could win like 50,000 and I think you get paid like a per diem and there's, like, fun, right? Like, I'm sure when you're bored as hell, like, those challenges are, like, the best part of your day. You're like, oh, you know, today I, I starved, but I did get to play ring toss or, like, try to do, a, like, an eight-piece puzzle or something like that. Um, but on Naked and Afraid, if you make it to the end, you get $10,000, which is, like, is not an insignificant sum of money. But considering how much money the Discovery Network probably makes from every single uh, show that they film, like, that's crazy. Also, Naked and Afraid is an hour long, but you're fucking there for, like, a month, right? Like, it's three weeks? Okay, 
Okay, we're going downstairs. Just everybody will just look here. That's plum flute. I'm not too excited about that. <laughs> also, yeah, you got a hang dong. Have you guys seen the episode and the answer? I, I'm assuming the answer is no, and that's fine. But have you seen the episode of uh, Naked and Afraid? Where they have like a, a Facebook Live, um, like wannabe patriot. And he, because on every episode of Naked and Afraid, it's, it's a guy and a girl on the same team. He was so excited to be on it. He's like aggressively like signaling that he's insanely heterosexual he's like i can't wait to see who my partner is like i hope she's hot like he was like a 12 year old boy and then his partner was just an why did i even go in and then his partner was just another guy and he was already upset but then on top of that like the other guy was just like a normal dude he's just like a nice guy who's like hey we should like work on this together but the dude was not having it he was like, you know, don't tell me what to do. Dude, if you tell me what to do, we're going to have problems. And then they merged like a week in with a tribe that was two ladies or a group that was two ladies, I guess. And he was so excited again to meet the ladies. And then instantly, because they're like, you know, human beings, they picked up on his weirdo vibes. And they basically ostracized him from the group. Um, and then he got so sad that he quit but before he quit he did like uh he was like i'm never gonna quit these guys want me to quit everybody wants me to quit i'm not gonna quit and they were like okay you're weirding everybody out but like do whatever you want to do and then uh like six hours later he's like i'm out of here <laughs> f you i hate you <laughs> it was so good man He's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tough out these last 11 days, cause I never quit. And then, uh, like, after lunch, he was like, I quit. It was so good. Anyway, that's that's a remarkable episode. Most of the episodes are not that remarkable. Usually, well, actually, that episode was crazy too, cause like there was one point where like a lady just had a complete nervous breakdown. Now that I remember. Like, she, just, she was, like, totally fine. She was, like, you know, a survivalist-type individual. And then she just screamed and, like, ran into the ocean. And then... <laughs> I, mean, I don't know, I guess I shouldn't be laughing, but I was already watching the show for entertainment anyway. But she, like, screamed and ran into the ocean. And then, like, the medics had to come. And she was just, like, she broke down. And they're like, yeah, you can't be here. Are you, like, are you all right? Can you explain the show for me? Uh, so Naked and Afraid is like people who are into uh, survivalism. So like, you know, self-sufficiency, uh, you know, surviving outdoors, foraging, hunting, stuff like that. They challenge themselves by going into the most inhospitable climates on Earth. So it might be the rainforest, it might be a desert, you know. They never like the Arctic, I think, but... Because they, I guess, just literally, like, pass away. But, um, hold on. It's insanely good. It's insanely good, maybe. Beep. I'm happy with where we stand here. Anyway. Um, and then, yeah, also, they're naked because they uh, are, you know, they're not supposed to have any advantages. But also, I think, just so they could put naked in the title because it's going to be very performant. And they're, they're not afraid, really. You don't see too much fear. You do see a lot of people being... Like, any because of the way that the show is edited, you can look at um, an episode and feel like a genius. You know, the, they're like... They'll find, like, a, a, a pond with brackish water in it, and then, like, one of them will be like, I think this water is perfectly good. Like, there's nothing wrong with this. And then the announcer always comes in and is like, drinking brackish water can contain... Uh, parasites such as a brain-eating amoeba and stuff like that. And, uh, and then they get really sick. And you're like, I told you, dummy. I told you. If I was on Naked and Afraid, I definitely wouldn't have done that shit. I guess I would have just died of thirst instead. 
Yeah, it's really more like um, naked and exhausted. You sound like the narrator from Bar Rescue. Thank you, Jay. He's got to be from... John Taffer has to be from New Jersey, right? He's either born in Hoboken or he's born in Las Vegas. There's no in-between. He's from Long Island. We finally found the Long Island Large. He would find that flattering. I mean, he's a big personality. At least he's not from Chevy Chase, Maryland. I can't watch Bar Rescue because uh, on the well, I guess it's on Paramount Plus now, which I will not pay for. But um, I told you I couldn't uh, watch Bar Rescue even when we had like our, our daughter was like insanely young, and I was getting up at like four in the morning to bottle feed her sometimes because they would take a thirty-minute episode of, of Bar Rescue, stretch it to literally two hours, and then just run the same five minutes of commercials for other Paramount Network shows as the ad break. So, like, the, their running time for the day, like, they would have 24 hours of programming, but it would be, like, eight 30-minute episodes of Bar Rescue, and then just, like, you'd see the same ad for, like, a tattoo cover-up show over and over and over again. It was, they, did, they put no effort whatsoever into, like, their, their TV channel. I guess because they knew Paramount Plus was coming anyway. Bar Rescue, okay, for anyone who's not, Bar Rescue is literally just kitchen nightmares, but for bars. So, like, there's, you know, on, uh, on kitchen nightmares where they're, like, you know, the, the, the kitchen being really dirty, the analog to that on Bar Rescue is somebody using a glass to scoop the ice out of the ice tray. You can get chunks of broken glass in the drinks! I'm shutting it down! Which is confusing because also there is um, there's another show called Restaurant Impossible, which is the same as Kitchen Nightmares, but if the host was a Marine Corps sergeant who ate Gordon Ramsay, so there's like. A few shows in the same genre. Then there's, um... What's the one that's fake, but they pretend it's real? Like, it's a hidden camera show, and they go into the restaurants, but it's all actors, actually. Mystery di- Dude, Mystery Diners is so good. Mystery Diners is- They pretend it's real. Like, this is not a mockumentary. They're just lying to the viewers. But Mystery Diners is, uh, they pretend it's real, but on every episode something insane happens. They're like, yeah, I don't know, my restaurant's losing a lot of money. And then, like, five minutes into the episode, they just see, uh, like, the head waitress steal $10,000 out of their safe. And then at the end of the episode, they confront the people who, who did whatever. You know, sometimes they're stealing, sometimes they're like... There was one episode where it was like a, a microbrewery, but the bartender was like siphoning the beer and then inserting like macro brewery into the taps instead. Anyway, it was, that's a good show. It was kind of like Scooby-Doo. That's a good way to describe it. I do, I, I have seen some Hotel Hell. I like, uh, I like Hotel Hell. It's crazy how, on how many episodes of Hotel Hell there will be, like, a boss who is, like, uh, it comes out five minutes into the episode that the boss just doesn't pay their employees. And, like, not, like, pay them well. Like, literally doesn't give them a paycheck. And you're like, what? And steals their tips. Well, that yeah, that's a classic uh, Amy's Baking Company, right? <laughs> I kind of respect Amy's Baking Company. Hold on! I, 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 
Un under no circumstances do you have to hand it to Amy, is the follow-up tweet. But, like, I think most bad people try to, like, seem... They try to be undercover bads, you know? They try to act like good people. Amy's Baking Company, they were like, yeah, we're crazy, so what? If you don't like it, don't eat at my restaurant. I kind of respect that. At least they owned it. Sammy threatened the guy with a knife. All right. You know, people are nuanced. Not Nobody's 100% good and nobody's 100% bad, okay? He should not have done that. I can be a big man and acknowledge that he probably... Well, he definitely should not have threatened a patron with a knife. But yeah, this is Am I the Asshole? His cafe, his rules. Is it maybe the patron uh, asked why he doesn't go to church? Does that change your opinion? And then accused him of worshipping Satan? And was nine years old? This is why you've got to watch every single video in order to understand the jokes. Maybe the patron invited him to a child-free wedding. What is happening? I guess we might as well. Dude, these wisps are kind of crazy. Anyway, I love all those shows. I love any reality. I've been watching a little bit more TV since my mom has been here. I love any show where you can talk shit about someone that is clearly superior to you in whatever domain the TV show is in, but you get to feel superior to them. Like, we watched the little guys' grocery games yesterday. You know, they're professional chefs. They were making carnival food, right? Lady pulls her, uh, her carnival, you know, grilled cheese egg rolls out of the fryer. I say, ooh, that looks good. Dude's got a crispy potato skillet. He did in mini cast irons. I say, ooh, that looks good. Dude took his grilled cheese off of the uh, pan and the whole sandwich fell apart. You fucking idiot. You dummy. Your sandwich fell apart before you even got it to the plate, you asshole. Are you stupid? You really think, uh, what's the guy's name? Chef Jet. Uh, I forget his last name. You think he's good? Well, the sandwich, on one hand, I really like the caramelization you got on it. Uh, but on the other hand, it fucking fell apart. You're going home. All right. <clears throat> that was fun, though. Slash marker. It'll be 